ladies and gentlemen, you welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, insecurity and violence on the rise in schools across the Republic of Cameroon and the country's Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Leonga, says criminals are invading the school and that students, pupils and even teachers and other school officials are in security. Speaking today in Douala during a fact-finding mission to government bilingual high school at the do where a student was recently stabbed dead, she said government is taking all measures necessary to step up security in schools across the country. And authorities of the littoral region are equally undertaking uh, measures and actions to step up security in the Mongo division, notably in the localities close to the border with the crisis hit southwest region of the country. And this comes on the heels of uh, repeated attacks attributed to the Anglophone crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. Those were our top stories. Life is gradually returning to normalcy, in quotes, in the southwest regional chief town uh, Boya as the 10 day lockdown in pros imposed by pro independence fighters comes to an end this week. Derek Jato looks at the atmosphere in Boya for the past days within the context of the uh, lockdown and, of course, the deepening Anglophone crisis. Derek Jato. The separatist fighters are approaching, and the Buya helpless population is again trapping between. Hey, they're there already. I beg, no, I beg, I beg, I beg you, I beg. It is 3 p.m. Sunday, April 7. In Moliko, the social heartbeat of the city of excellence, the fall of the controversial imposed 10 days lockdown in faculty division by the separatist leaders. A siege is evident at checkpoint. The separatist fighters are on the street and the military forces cruises in. Seconds later, the heat is on. And it lasted for two minutes, 10 seconds. No one is killed in the exchange. But this taxi burned by the separatists is a mark left behind indicating that they were here. And confrontations like this have also been witnessed in other neighborhoods of this city. And Mayor Ekema Patrick Isunge, the mayor of Buya Council, has sent this coming. Reason why on April 4, he want business community to open their shops or have them sealed for another 30 days. He would march what with action by stepping out himself to do so. An action many say positively stimulated his business community to an extent. And in one of the markets he visited, he told the economic operators to remain brave. As death and destructions are being recorded in Boya, Limbe is waxing strong with the festival that triggered the lockdown for the set festival not to take place. And after spending the greater part of his time on the field, May Ekema Patrick Isunga comes back to his office April 10, six days later, to sign another communique, this time of lifting the seal in what he called absolute clemency. And as FACO Division negotiated the last bend of the 10 days lockdown, the population of Boya is still in tears. Tears brought by the lockdown phase of the Anglophone crisis. Not only the lockdown, but the socio-political and security crisis hitting the two Anglophone regions of the country globally 
has caused a lot of bloodshed and of course flowing down of tears, uh, tears flowing down the cheeks of inhabitants of the two Anglophone regions of the country as a result of the crisis that has continued deepening with uh, recurring god battles like uh, the one you saw in those uh, images uh, sent to us by a correspondent in Boya, uh, Derek Jato. And of course, uh, still in the heat of the Anglophone crisis, at least uh, 10 persons have been rendered homeless in a fire incident uh, that is uh, going on uh, that uh, broke out a few minutes ago in the Gardens neighborhood in the Opec city of Limbe in the southwest region of the country. A house of over 10 rooms is being reduced into ashes as we speak now and rescue soldiers on the ground battling to quench the flames and of course to stop it from spreading, uh, to stop the flames from spreading to other nearby uh, buildings. At least 10 persons have been rendered homeless. Meanwhile, in neighboring Mongo division, insecurity is on the rise as the crisis in the two Anglophone regions of the country spills into that part of the littoral region of the country. And authorities are taking some measures in order to upgrade or step up the security of persons and properties in the Mongo division. Details in this report by Smanji Kangebre. With the recent rise of insecurity faced by some inhabitants of the Mongo Division as a result of the crisis in the Anglophone zones of Cameroon, with areas like Mombo, Ndo, and Banga being the latest cases recording incursions from unidentified gunmen, the choice from Konsamba to host the littoral security meeting was timely. Chaired by Littoral's regional governor, it was an occasion for the population to be assured of their security. They want to be assured that we have taken some measures to assure uh, more security in our villages. We have some uh, uh, borders with uh, our borders southwest, and uh, most of the time we have in Mongom, Banga, and maybe in Melon uh, some incursions that uh, people can come and shoot down here and there, but it's just to assure them that uh, we have taken some measures. But for this to be effective, the population also has a role to play, which is that of collaborating with security forces. But they have to be vigilant and to cooperate, to give information at time so that we can react and make people live in peace. The gathering that brought together top and local administrative officials within the Mongo division served as a platform for problems faced by those local administrators to be evoked. For the mayor of Nkonsamba 1, the problem of lightning, water and hygiene and sanitation were the major preoccupations of his council area. Meanwhile, the mayor of Nkonsamba 3 talks about problems linked to land titles. In all of the problems raised by the mayors, the governor promised to look into them. The littoral security meeting ended in Konsamba this Thursday with a closed-door session amongst the different local administrators. And insecurity as well as violence are equally on the rise in schools across the Republic of Cameroon, especially in public schools after the death of a student of government bilingual high school who was stabbed to death by his friend on the school campus. The Minister of Secondary Education, Nalova Lyonga, was in Tuala uh, today to, uh, on a fact-finding mission, and she told reporters that criminals are invading the schools. Mark it for way. Close to two weeks after the death of Tamar Rosman Blerua, the Form 5 student of Government Bilingual High School, Deido, here in the economic capital, Douala, the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Lyonga, is on a fact-finding mission. Madam, uh, approximately how many students stay in one class? In this class? We have, we have uh, between 90 and 100. Between 90 and 100. And you think they were all here on that day? 
You can only think, I cannot know. She has been taken to the incident site on the second floor in front of the Form 5 classroom where a student was stabbed. She blames the authorities for being negligent while carrying out their duties. I think the system gives room for things to happen because you have students who are unattended. You understand what I'm saying? I'm getting the students are unattended and we all know that the students are around you. When they are there without teachers, something might happen. You know, and so you take care. When I tell you that all report cards, the students must be followed electronically. I don't want to hear any any uh, resistance from your school. That is what you should do. Report cards should not be given, asking everybody should, to come, when you know that obviously you cannot follow all the students. Because if you're asking all the students to come there, all the teachers should come, and the students should go directly to their class with a teacher. So they get their cards and they go away. But when you leave them here to come and play, play results in something. The minister was equally taken to the site where the student jumped in in order to carry out the act. Then we were just called a few minutes ago by some people outside to tell us to come and see young men consuming drugs. Just now, but we went and locked, unlocked the door. Madam, do you have experts to deal with this? Uh, this thing has not worked. You, know, you just use your little means. Every building in the school should be done by experts. She ended her visit by meeting with the parents of the staff students to pay condolence, though it was done behind the camera. And the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Pauline Nalova Lyonga, told reporters shortly after the visit to Government Balingo High School, they do, and of course to the family residents of the students who were stabbed to death, the student of Government Balingo High School, they do, and the meeting that she had with some uh, education stakeholders at the governor's office in Bonanjo, uh, that the government is fully uh, supporting. Uh, the family of the child who was killed by his friend. This is what she said concerning government's aid to that family. We have come from Yaoundé to see the parents of the deceased uh, and we have come with some money. You know, uh, not to say that that's the most important thing, but it's to tell them that the government is here with them. Even before I came, the government in Yaoundé has been in touch with them the, uh, the, the governor here in Douala has been in touch with them, so no impression should be given that the government has not reached the, the parents of the child. We have been doing everything in order to do that. You know, I'm asking people to ask themselves, how come these three children became entangled in a case like that? All of them have nicknames. We are going to do our best to reinforce security measures, to reinforce discipline. Discipline must be in the schools. There's no doubt if you have a child who does not want to be disciplined, that child should go back to the parents and live with the parents. Professor Nalova Lyonga had a serious meeting that ran through uh, several hours with education stakeholders at the governor's office and they were discussing the issue of a rising insecurity and violence in schools across the country and it emerged in that meeting that uh, there are several uh, loopholes that are uh, causing or uh, f in favor of the security challenges that are faced by several schools across the country both public and private schools. And Professor Nalova Lyonga, as I told you earlier, said criminals are invading schools in Cameroon. Take a listen to Professor Nalova Lyonga. Severe, very, very severe. And I hope that we can do something very, very strong in order to deter all the criminals. We have a situation where even non-schoolers, children who do not belong to the school, buy uniforms and come to the school. Where have you heard that? You know, it is terrible. So we have uh, criminals who are invading the schools. It is very bad if we don't want to get to a situation where 
our schools and it is not just the schools but even the people all of us are insecure when you get into a situation where you know people who are transvestites they dress in kaba and trousers to come and attack a school who said so you know things like that should not be they should not happen at all and I think that we are going to do our best to reinforce security measures, to reinforce discipline. Discipline must be in the schools. There's no doubt if you have a child who does not want to be disciplined, that child should go back to the parents and live with the parents. School space is common space. It is not space for criminals. Professor Nalo Valyunga, and I told you earlier that more than 10 persons have been rendered homeless in the opec city of Limbe in the southwest region of the country by a fire incident that broke out some few minutes ago. A house of over 10 rooms has been ravished by wild flames. And a reporter in Limbe, Davidson Maimo, indicates to us that the rescue soldiers arrived the scene after the flames that ravaged practically the entire building and of course more than 10 persons as I indicated have been rendered homeless in the gardens neighborhood in Limbe. We'll be coming back in greater details with our correspondent in Limbe and of course uh, we'll continue talking something else in this newscast talking about the upgrading of enterprises in the Republic of Cameroon. Many enterprises are still hesitating to get into the upgrading process piloted by the uh, upgrading office or so the enterprises upgrading office and the officials of that institution met with some entrepreneurs here in Douala in order to canvas for more companies to get into the national upgrading program. Details in this report. Out of over 12,000 agro-transformation enterprises in Cameroon, 500 have adhered to the national upgrading program piloted by the Enterprises Upgrading Office. Some are afraid of us because they think that we have some link with the FISC administration. Some others don't want to be, to be seen, to be uh, transparent. That's why they can hesitate. Some of the enterprises do not meet exigencies of the upgrading process, thus the need for sensitization of officials of enterprises. We want to talk with our uh, beneficiary, the enterprises, of uh, PIFPA, the new program we have, we, which is financed by uh, uh, IFD. We want to tell them where are our mission, where is, what is our mission, and to ask them to make the part of the, the convention. That means uh, the, the, the upgrading is a volunteer. That, so when uh, uh, an entrepreneur is volunteer, he can go through the, the plan, yes, up, up, upgrade, upgrading plan, without leaving us uh, in the road like that. Uh, we, are, we want them to be responsible and together we will achieve the mission they gave us, they gave us. During this sensitization and information sharing meeting between officials of the upgrading office and entrepreneurs in Douala, some enterprises who have successfully gone through the upgrading process received certificates testifying that the quality of their services and products have been upgraded to international standards. We went through a lot of training and how to manage properly a company, how to, to do in, in order to act, uh, achieve the efficiency needs to satisfy our customers. The other enterprises still hesitating have been urged to join the upgrading train. Out of Cameroon, the president of Sudan, Umar al-Bashi, has resigned. He has been compelled to step down by the citizens who took to the streets in their thousands protesting against his overstay in power. And the public protest compelled him to resign. He is now in the hands of the army of that country and this is coming after the resignation of the Algerian President Abdulaziz Bouteflika
Africans. And in Sudan, the same scenario that took place in Algeria, uh, equally it took place. Thousands of persons took to the streets protesting, and after his resignation, tens of thousands of people have flooded the streets to celebrate what is believed to be the end of al-Bashir's turbulent 30-year um, uh, leadership in that country and following months of protests, civilian uh, civil unrest and police civilian clashes, Omar al-Bashi has finally bowed to pressure from the people he has stepped down. That's it for the first part of this newscast. Coming up next, Talking Point. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of Talking Points. We're going to be talking about the rising insecurity and violence in schools across the country and accusing fingers, appointing touch senior discipline masters and discipline masters who are said to uh, be the, those directly uh, responsible for the security of students and other school officials. And we are receiving a senior discipline uh, master in this school, uh, Yungong Henry, you are the senior discipline master of Mandela or Nelson Mandela Bilingual Comprehensive College in Bonaberry. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Babila Jonathan. Where is the problem? Why is it that insecurity and violence sound rise in schools across the country, both public and private school, but more so public schools? Yeah, uh, there are so many reasons why such insecurity is on a rise. Reason being that so many of us have forgotten our roles. Both the parents, the society, and the teacher have their own roles to play so that students become what we want. So taking care of the student is a tripartite, which means that three components, parents, the student themselves, and the society must come together. But the problem at hand is because today's reality is that students have been taken off by certain things which we do not understand. Parents don't even take care of their ch children. The first thing is for a child to behave well, the parents must start from the house. When they start from the house because they spend the greater part of their time with the, with the children in the house than the teachers in school. Yes, the Minister of Higher of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Lyonga, during the meeting with education stakeholders at the Little Governor's Office today, highlighted that aspect of parents, but accusing fingers are equally pointing towards disciplined masters like you for failing to do one or two things. Like, for example, the case in Government Bilingual High School, uh, they do where a student was touched to death on the campus of the school. Yes, uh, services to humanity demand painful sacrifice, which means that we, the district masters, are the most targeted persons. Reason being that each time you go there as an individual, you become the focal length to which the criminals look upon, which means that they always see you as an enemy. But what I know, and I think that could help us, is the fact that when you accept to be a discipline master, you should know that you have accepted to carry the cross of humanity by making sure that we walk hand in hand and quell down that uh, spirit of indiscipline. Now, looking at the case of public schools in particular, because uh, this um, problem seems to be uh, more significant, more uh, serious in public schools. Where is the problem? Where are the lapses? What are the, 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 the problems that are uh, making it uh, possible for criminals, like the Minister of Secondary Education said, to invade schools, even with the control at the gate and within the school campus? Yes. We know that humanity in most cases is always weak, especially with public services. Reason being that there is a lot of what they call laissez-faire, tolerance. So much such that when some parents come and intimidate school authorities, maybe forcing them 
to uh, uh, let go some students without punishment, they fear certain things and they allow. But I know that if we work together, like in our own case, what we do is we do not even let the student to know when we are going to do a raid, which means go and surprise them, get into their bags, take whatever uh, is there that is not academic. We destroy them or we call the parents, tell them that this is what your child has brought. And so we destroy them. I think the public should work also, should also work with the private sectors so that things may be better off. Now, the responsibility of parents, where have they failed? In what aspects? But parents have this attitude of papa infallibility, where they believe that their children cannot do certain things because what they see in the house is not what, they, what transpires in school. Some parents forget that they as parents have their own role to play. They stay away and they think that the only person who can discipline their child is the school. Meanwhile, in the house, the child pretends he wears a different coat and when he comes to school, he becomes a different thing. Parents most of the parents encourage their children, maybe because of what they have, means sometimes parents tell the children, if you go to school and they do this to you, tell them, so let them know who I am. So when they do this, it pushes children, or it makes children to think that that is a stepping stone for them to create insecurity. In now, another so problem that uh, came um, to the forefront during the meeting between the stakeholders and the minister was uh, the issue of enrollment, pletoric enrollments. And I heard the minister say 8,000 uh, students in a secondary school, that's practically a university. Yes. Really, you know, in Cameroon, whatever people want is money, that which we give them money. And sometimes they go beyond what has been given to them as an order to follow. So they go beyond. We, in our school, we do not, each classroom do not carry more than 60 students. So we make sure that... But in our public schools today, we have 100, 120, and uh, an enrollment of 100 up to 120 per class. That, and that is where we find it difficult sometimes to even control the students. And at the end, you see some of them, they come in, they meander around with certain things, and at the end, we get stories like what happened in uh, uh, government uh, Balingua High School. And the minister Baidu. comes visiting close to two weeks after. Uh, that is it. We notice that, and where it is certain, since we know that there are so many things, as the, uh, she as a minister has so many things doing, uh, maybe she had other things doing. But what the first thing is, let us work hand in hand so that we avoid uh, such tension to be coming up and things will be better for us. Now we wrap up with the role of the government. Yeah, we, the role of the government is the government should know that its citizens are to be controlled by the government. So the government, when they put a school, let them make sure that those who are sent there should do that which the government wants. All right. Thanks so much, Yung Kong Henry, Senior Discipline Master of Nelson Mandela Bilingual uh, Comprehensive. Comprehensive College. Thank you, in sir. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today. Thank you, sir.